Jesus, hello there, and welcome to the to the rear view mirror. Um, and as you can tell, we're normally here on a Sunday night, but uh, to be absolutely honest, with the diet that we are both on and the exercise and everything, come nine o'clock at night, ready for bed. So this is why you were seeing it tonight and at an earlier time. Actually, no, we normally do this at eight o'clock, don't we? It's the dark mirror show we do at nine o'clock. But uh, so t Taylor's finishing off her dinner, so I will. Uh, start oh yeah bit of information for you you know um that the uh, the u.s government is apparently going to be doing its uh, disclosure um, report which has already been leaked to the new york times and they're saying that all the ufos they've seen and all the ufos they've got videos of hey wayne um oh mate good luck <clears throat> and all the um sorry that's my co-host wayne from the dark moon show he's in the chat room um, yeah, so where the hell was I? Yes, uh, their um, report was leaked to the New York Times, and uh, it, it said basically that all the videos they've seen and all the videos that we've seen, where it's bloody clear it's nothing from us or any other country, they've turned around and said, it's not our, it's nothing from our military, it's nothing from any other country's military, but it's nothing extraterrestrial. Just Let's, let's just pause for a minute to... Realize the uh, sheer enormity of that statement. The craft that we have seen are not from any of our uh, military, and it's not from any other military around the world, but it's not. There's not enough evidence to say it's uh, extraterrestrial. Taylor, could you just pause in your in your chomping just for one second to do the Jackie Chan face at uh, here? Ooh. That's the Jackie Chan face. Woo, there you go. He even got a Jackie Chan face from her. And yet, on the other side of the world, the uh, Chinese government have announced that they are using AI to track um, the ever-increasing reports they have of UFOs because it's got so um, frequent. So they're using AI to track these UFOs that don't exist, that the UF government hasn't seen enough evidence to say they're real. Yet yeah, China's tracking them. That's that's all I'll say about that. Would you be, would you like to move over a bit more, and I'll move. I'll come off screen a bit. Yeah, there, there you go. Right now. So um yeah, so that's the latest at the moment. Is uh, America is what well, the American government, not the people. The American government is denying um, that uh, all the UFOs that we've seen in their military have seen are extraterrestrial, but they're also denying that it comes from any known military or any country. He's still alive. Lovely. Um, and yet the Chinese are saying, yeah, yeah, it's UFOs, we're using AI to track them because there's so many sightings. Can I just apologise to everyone for a minute? I have very bad hay fever, so if I do like a weird blinky thing like this, it's, my eyes are really itchy. She's actually trying to hold in a fart, but just no, I wouldn't hold one in. This is very true. So, anyway, what did I say we would do tonight? We would do... The weird... top 10 supernatural stories from the 1800s. Yes. And um, I don't know if you remember back along, we did... Um... Who's sitting on my foot? Oh, Obi. yes. We did a... Um... Oh, shush. That's please sorry. We did uh, a show with Wayne, Wayne and myself on Dark Mirror Show, and we did one all about Victorian era and... Uh, all the weird and wonderful um, stories that come from there. So you should find this one rather interesting. So we're going to start off at number 10 with the Phantom Bird of West Drayton. Now, for those of you who don't know, West Drayton is, is a little suburb in, well, it's not even a suburb, it's just London. a in London. We, we used to live near it, didn't we? Yeah. Um, and it, trust me, it's not a nice place. But back in the Victorian times, it might have been a nice leafy suburb. Oh, and the only thing... The only phantom bird you're going to see in West Drayton is the one who's gone around the corner promising you a good time and the next thing you know, you're waking up with a lump on your head, your money and your wallet gone, isn't it? And your ID. And your ID. Will that be in your wallet? No. Not if you're like me. Be in your phone? Well, your phone my phone gone. is my wallet. Like, my entire look. Please don't steal it from me. Like mine. Please don't steal it from me. Anyway, around 1749... Uh, the villagers of West Drayton frequently heard screaming as well as a knocking noise coming from the local church. 
Oh, hi, hi. I love people always coming from the local church and screaming. But those poor choir boys. Those choir boys. They just wind up going, but father, why are you pooped from there? Um, nobody was certain where exactly the sounds originated, but there were a lot of sightings of a strange raven that would fly inside the church and its vaults. Um, a group of four men and two boys who found the bird in the chancel one time tried chasing it down. After being smacked with a stick a few times, the raven fell to the ground with a scream. But just as its body hit the floor, the bird disappeared right in front of its, its attackers. Um, and after that incident, the raven could still be seen flying about its usual spots. Um, among the villagers, it was said that the bird was actually the ghost of a murderer who'd killed himself. Um, back then, a man like that wouldn't have been allowed a proper burial, but his family had managed to find him a spot in the churchyard. Uh... What do you make of that then? Back then, it would make a lot of sense since there was lots of witchcraft and stuff going on for them to say that oh that's that's a murderer that got turned into a bird just flying around squawking at people. I mean, it was probably just a bird, just a bird with feathers. With feathers, oh, yeah, bird leaves. Bird leaves. Bird leaves. Where was it we saw that? Some moron thought feathers were bird leaves. It was like, I love it when he tickles me with a bird leaf. Oh, yeah, and all our friends are going, what? And that's what I call it for now on. Forever. A bird leaf. A bird leaf. Why also, do... a water zoo. Oh. You can go to a water zoo and get a bird leaf if you go to the deep. They swim then. They have penguins there. Penguin. Penguin. Penguins. And they sell the feathers. Smile and wave, boys. And they sell the feathers, and you can get them, and then they, the money that they get for the feathers, they donate. And that's the deep in hole. Yes. There you have it. You have to pre-book it now. You can't just walk in because of COVID, which we found out. Oh, and before I forget, hello to those of you watching us on Facebook, and please excuse YouTube. the pale Facebook and YouTube. Please excuse the paleness of the pair of us. I've tried to adjust the lighting, and if I don't have the lamp on, it's too dark. If I open the curtains, we're literally white. So I close the <laughs> curtains, it's too dark, put the lamp on, white. No one's watching. That's all right, we'll just carry on. And uh, if nobody else is watching, then shame on you. Mm. So, where were we? Let's go to, was this uh, something about... The ghost who saved John Thomas. And for those of you who've got the same sense of humour as me, and guffaw, a ghost saved somebody's John Thomas. You can read this one out. Look at the date. Oh, shit. On Finley's birthday, oh, December on December 20... 21st, 1783, a 62-year-old drunk named John Thomas was walking back home in the dark when he accidentally fell into a deep pit. After a John have... Thomas got drunk and wound up in a deep hole. Deep pit. A deep pit. Carry on. After realising that Thomas was missing, his friends tried looking for him, but Thomas would be stuck in the hole for another week. And we all been there. <laughs> One day, am I right? One day, while a neighbour was looking for his sheep, he noticed a figure sitting on a bank of dirt near the pit. As the neighbour approached, the man's as the neighbour approached the man, he stood up and went behind the bank. Curious, the neighbour checked the spot and found that the man had vanished into thin air. Suddenly, the neighbour heard a voice coming from the pit. Thinking that it was a moonshiner, though, the neighbour ignored it and pressed on. Fortunately, he heard the voice again on his way back and realised it was the missing drunkards, John Thomas... <laughs> Realised it was the voice of the missing drunkard, Dom John, John Thomas, ghostly helper. Yeah. However, never turned up. Do you know what? Whoever whoever writes these English huh? is terrible. It was the ghostly voice of John Thomas. His, however, it never turned up. However, his ghostly helper never turned up. So cool. somebody was sat in a bank going, wait, there's a drunken person. Well, he's going to be sober after a week. I, I know. Mm. Just like Finley. Those eyes. And of course, everything's frozen. Look at that. Oh no, does that mean we're frozen? Mm, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Yeah, everything's just. Oh no, no, no. Let no. me just check on our Facebook. We seem to be okay. 
I'll this, just check. This is why we are changing our uh, internet over because, quite frankly, it's balls. It really is. All right, let's try this again. Okay. Right, we've just done that. So here we are, number eight, the ch the changeling of the Isle of Man. Oh yeah, no, we're fine. Okay. But, yeah. Well, actually, we don't look so white on there, do we? Mm, just on, no. our, on the computer yeah. screen. Um, while living on the Isle of Man, uh, in the during the seventeen twenties, uh, <laughs> London-born George Waldron found that the locals <coughs> took fairies very seriously. They are this month, aren't they? Now oh, you can have my COVID. <gasps> They were constantly anxious that fairies might steal their children. And one woman even told Waldron that her baby had been replaced with a changeling. Uh, sometimes, sometime after giving birth to her third child, the woman was lying down when all of a sudden her baby floated off the bed, pulled by some invisible force. What the hell was she drinking? Same time. Mm. The woman screamed for help, but nobody else was home except for a drowsy nurse, and the baby was carried away. When the woman's husband came home, she found he found her a nervous wreck, and back in the bedroom, the couple found a naked changeling lying on the bed, their baby's clothes wrapped up next to it. The changeling would go on to live for only nine years, unable to speak, stand, or even poop. See, I feel like back then they didn't understand disability. Yeah. And so it, they would put it down to being, yeah. And so they would put it down to being changelings or something like that. Because I feel like if you've given birth and you don't realize that there is a serious disability, mental disability with your child, and then you do notice it, you're going to freak out. And back then she would have been accused of being a witch, right? Uh, she had a disabled child. Back then, they were so bloody backwards that they probably said it was a changeling or some sort of imp. Well, the thing is, I'm thinking is the women say, oh, it's a changeling. <coughs> uh -huh. I'm not a witch. That's not my child. Oh, I see. It was replaced. Yeah. I think that's a more... I'd have been thrown out a window, wouldn't I? If I, was in, if I was a Spartan, I'd have been... This is, is Sparta! Sparta! You see the vein on my forehead that there. was her vein on the forehead, actually. Um, so, yeah, um, changelings. There's a lot of stories about changelings, and it does come into fairy lore quite heavily. Um, they take they take uh, our child over into their realm and bring them up as one of their own. Any changeling comes with Finley, I'm biting you. They're not going to do that. Finley's uh, got his Irish grandfather watching them all the time. Great grandfather. Great grandfather. My dad's watching. <sighs> anyway, moving swiftly on. Shall we go on to. That looks pretty damn scary, doesn't it? The Lambert family poltergeist. Yes, and this is. No, you're not a poltergeist, you're a pug. The big difference. <laughs> a pugger Pugger guys. Hang on, hang on. Look, just, just, look, 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 look. He's by my leg now. Where is he? Where is he? No, no, he's gone. Dad. He's buggered off over there now. Hang on. That way. There he is. Oh, I'm ghost. That's one of the pugs, and that's a uh, German Shepherd. Is there a sock? Obi, it's probably in. a sock. Where's the Obi? other one? Oh, and there's one of the cats. Look at that. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi, Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> right. Gracias. Okay. I still look like a Cadbury's cream egg in the negative. They actually have white chocolate Cadbury's cream eggs. So I love Cadbury's cream eggs and I love white chocolate, but I don't know if I'd like the two together. And the fact that this is our second, nearly third week on keto? Second. This is the third. This is the third week on keto. Yes. The fact that this is the third week on keto doesn't help because I want chocolate. I can't wait. I can't wait to have KFC. Oh, KFC pizza. Ooh. Working though. Um, I have see appear to be. I've well, definitely lost it off my waist because uh, my belt and trousers are rather loose on me now. Um, lost almost a stone each, haven't we? So give it one more week. In last week. Are we doing another week, or are we going to do it for the two months? What? 
We've got this week, and mm. then we've got next week. So we're halfway through. We didn't, we've done two <laughs> weeks. Yeah, this is the third week, is what I meant. All right. Like, we're on the third week. Okay. But, yeah, we've lost um, Stone Each, haven't we? Hmm. So, it seems to be working. Anyway, where the fl- I was 93 kg, and now I'm 87. So you've lost 6 kg, which is almost which a stone. Is a, well, 6.3 is a stone. So I was 15 I was fifteen stone 11, and I'm now 15 stone 1. So, yeah. And that's not as bad as it, because it used to be, wasn't it? Out, both of us were... Boshuna! Ye jabawangi! And now it's not too bad. <laughs> so, it's just spindly. It's just spindly. <laughs> we both went like this. Uh, hey. <laughs> Spindly's got both our chins anyway, isn't he? I have to wash under there because he gets just so much poop stuck under. Not actual poop, but just dirt just stuck under there. So it's like having another pug. Yeah. Actually, I need to wash their face flaps. Anyway, let's. <laughs> you you heard it. You heard it first, guys. You just heard it on uh, the Review Mirror show that. Uh... Uh, Taylor has to wash a pug's face flaps. My cheese plant has its first ho- holy leaf coming in. This it's not even my big cheese plant. And I have another pu- look, there's another pug down here begging to come up. Let me just show you. Hello! Hi, Jimmy. Hello, Blurpole. And um, you have it. Whoop. That way. <laughs> Cat. And. Oh, it's, uh, there's one. Obi! He's eating. Can't just disturb no. him while and, he's eating. And there's the ghost. Hello, ghost. Oh, Jesus. Right. Okay. Now let's go back on today. Yeah. Right. Where were we? We were. <gasps> go back on. Go back on. Go back on. Go back on. Ghost! You just missed it. You just. Hi! <laughs> She Hello. stood up and her head was in between us. Oh, I wonder if I can get that on the on our page. Um, yeah, where were we? We were up to. Is this one? Where is, <coughs> is this your one or my one to read out? What's no, this one? It's my one. Your one. One the... second. I just need to. I just need to show you. I just need to show you. you, you... Oh, I can't show you. No, you can't because it's live. You see the song. No. Can't get stuff. Right. So you're going to read out about the Lambert family poltergeist. I might do. I'm just going to share our, our I'm just going to share this. Oi, hello there, you've got a sock. Thank you for that sock. It's over there now. It's over there. Go and get it and stop standing on your brother's head. Yeah. Okay, so. The Lambert family poltergeist. In 1753, John and Anne Lambert moved into their family home, moved their family into a new house in Winlington, England. I've never heard of that. I've never heard of it, but... Not long after moving into the house, the Lamberts found themselves harassed by poltergeist activity. They heard knocking noises in their bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. I'll keep watching. Anyway, it distracted me. And on one occasion, Anne saw a door and its latch move by themselves. After Anne was woken up by a ghostly man in the middle of the night, the Lamberts moved for a second time. At the new house, Anne continued to see nightly apparitions, and noises like gunshots and cannon fire could be heard too. The poltergeists only grew more violent, moving and attacking the Lamberts' children while they were in bed. Believing that the third time would be a charm, the Lamberts hoped to stop the attacks by moving yet again. Things only got weirder from there. In bed, Anne was attacked by a monster the size of a horse. Felt cold, invisible hands. Was Anne touching... Summers around in those days? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Felt cold, invisible hands touching her face, and saw a moving, blood-stained pewter dish. Where, 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 where? Pewter, yeah, pewter, the metal. Uh, both Lamberts also reported seeing the previous occupants of the first new house, Henry Cook. 
Or Dude. cookie. What Damn is that? Go. Cook or cookie? Uh, is it just got an E on the end? Yeah. Cook. Okay. Right, guys, move, please. Because you're pulling the bloody camera wire out. Move. Move. Yeah. You done? Cook, who had died in 1952, is thought to. 1952? 1752. 1752. Funnily enough is thought to have been the poltergeist who stalked the family. What happened afterwards to the Lamberts and who or what exactly stalked them is lost in history. I don't think I stumbled once when I read that. No, you didn't. Well done. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'd like to wake up to that kind of uh, nonsense going on. Yeah, no, I'm all right. I'd, uh, yeah, I think I'm fine with that as well. Um... So waking up and finding strange things floating around in your bedroom is generally what happens after a night out on the Raz um, when you're in your 20s. Sorry, I'm just trying to get pugs. Uh, I'll have move. you know, I'm right. in my 20s. And you went out on a night out on the Raz and <laughs> you found Sheldon. You got groped by a bouncer. <laughs> and you found Sheldon in future. your bedroom. Well, yeah. <laughs> just saying, you know. And then I had Finley. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Right. So, yes, that was... No, oh, I wouldn't like to wake up to that. Mm -mm. Funny enough, um, when I had my... And this is, <laughs> this is all, like, Sorry. in old, old Victorian places. When I had my foot amputated, I was 18 months old, um, and my mum was staying in, in the old wing of... Uh, Guys, if you have any comments, feel free to put them in because yeah, just we want to hear your away. opinion. Uh, in one of the old Victorian hospitals that come in London, I can't remember which one it was. Um, Dad. Dad. He's, got, he's got my entire sock as well. I know, I know he's an idiot. Um, and she said that the, this is my mum, oh. member of ex-military, doesn't drink, doesn't do drugs that I know of, would explain a lot if she did. Um, Gets the butter out occasionally. Uh, I've got to tell you, you said that. Go on. <laughs> Dear mum! Um, yeah, and it came in. She'd and... be like, no, Vaseline works better. You know she would. And um, she said that she was in bed and <laughs> she'd heard, heard stories of this ghost and, and it comes round to the side of the bed, tries to strangle you and then goes to, bed, goes to the end of bed and just disappears. Uh, and apparently this happened that night uh, that mum was in there waiting for me to have my foot cut off. So... Uh, Jeez. Yeah, but this, this is all old Victorian London. It's all part of okay. it Queen, that? Queen Mary's Hospital. Did you have it Queen Mary's off? Hospital. Did you have it cut off in England? Yeah. How long did you stay in Hong Kong before you moved over here? Like a year? Like two years, I think. Two years, three years, something like that. So why did she fly back, have your leg amputated, and then fly back again? We're talking Hong Kong, early 70s. Yeah. What do you think? I don't know, honestly. I'm... Um, Maybe because the medical care was slightly better. Fairly safe. Just this, this it was. Did you know that the Queen's mother had caesareans at home? Really? With each of her children, caesareans, because that's the traditional way. And so did the oh no, so did the Queen. But then the other royals, the newest royals, Kate and the other one, Meghan, they had natural, apparently, and I think Diana had natural as well, actually. I thought it was interesting. It was interesting. Now shush. Um, number six, the Sea Dragon of Suffolk. <coughs> the Sea Dragon of Suffolk. See if it had been the Sea Dragon of Somerset, I would say, oh, oh you know my ex-mother-in-law. What? Will you two stop He's trying so to bum each famous. other? Jesus. Thirsty He's boys. Dirty him. thirsty boys. Look at him. It's like a pug porn. It's look, disgusting. Look. He anyway, on. anyway, I'm not reading this. You are Ugh, dirty, dirty, dirty. <laughs> Off the coast of Suffolk, England, in November 1749, a group of fishermen were shocked to find a sea monster, monster, Ooh. sea monster among their mackerel in their net. The monster had wings, an alligator head, and hoofs for feet. So it sounds like they've been uh, hitting the sauce a bit. <laughs> Features that reminded some of the fishermen of a dragon. After taking the sea dragon to shore and beating it with a boat hook, as you do, Why not? Uh, the creature's captors had the brilliant idea of opening the net. Unsurprisingly, the monster took off, flying 46 metres, which is 150 feet, up into the air. The first man who tried to catch it has some of his fingers bitten off. Good. 
The bite was so horrible that it killed him. Um, the next man who went after the sea dragon was luckier. He ended up catching it, but only because the monster landed on his arm and squeezed it so tightly that it deformed his hand and fingers. It was my great-great-granddad! Uh, while a man might have died in the attempt, the sea dragon was a good catch, and a surviving fisherman showed its carcass across the country. Why did anybody have to kill stuff just because they don't know what it is? Well, what cameras invented? I think late 17th, early 18th. Just. Yeah, there's a photo of it. The no, sea dragon it. That There'd probably be a woodcut of it in a newspaper. Um, but similar to a photo. Um, see, that's the only, the only thing I don't like about cryptids, because that, that's cryptids and UFOs, as you, as you guys know, is my, they're my fortes. They're my, the things I know a fair bit about for some reason. But cryptids, I've always thought, get photo, photos of them, yeah. Get a film of them, yeah. Leave them alone you know uh, if they're not harming you oh there it is if they're not harming you <laughs> why go out and harm them and killing one and uh taking it apart see what makes it tick come on guys we're in the uh, 21st century 22nd century now aren't we? however yeah. saying that well i'm still gonna eat meat no i'll still eat meat but i mean like if they find a yeti leave it be if they actually have if you to find a dodo just because no. it's kind and it walks up to you. There aren't any left. Oh, I'm well aware. Apparently, that we didn't actually hunt them to eat. Yes, they did. It, apparently, it was the animals that we brought to that island that hunted them. Yeah, and, and the fishermen used to, the, 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 the sailors that were on the island also just went, dunk, and ate them. They were so cute. Mm. They were like pugs of the bird world. Any really Dumb and like waddled up to you. Anyway, Miss Pringle's doppelganger. <laughs> On an early mo morning... Do you like your teeth back? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> On an early morning stroll in Scotland's Clifton Park in the summer of 1745. Nailed it. Housekeeper Jane Lowe told her employer, a man named Pringle, that's really cool. Once you pop, you can't stop. That oh. she'd spotted his daughter walking along the rivulet. A rivulet. 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 It's just a little. This was impossible, though. Miss Pringle was nearly 1,600 kilometres or 1,000 miles away living in France. Lowe was positive that it wasn't a different woman. However, oh, I hate that. They put punctuation where it doesn't need to be and wanted to show Pringle. When coming up to the spot, Pringle really did see his daughter, who then jumped into the rivulet and vanished. Afterwards, Pringle and his housekeeper reported it to the rest of the family, but everybody else laughed it off as a joke. Three months later, Pringle was paid a visit by his son, who he hadn't seen in 10 years. His boy explained that he'd been a slave in Tunis. But one morning, he inexplic inexplicably, in give me a minute, inexplicably, hmm? wait, inexplicably, oh. <laughs> give me a minute, inexplicably, yes, found his sister and was then saw his sister, I'm saw saying. his sister and then was ransomed. After going back to France, he discovered that his sister had actually been dead having died at the exact same moment that she was seen in both Tunisia and Scotland. Oh, Tunisia. I know yeah, where Tunis, that is. Tunisia. Okay. That's a crisis apparition. Um, <laughs> on a previous Dark Mirror show, we, we've discussed crisis apparitions, which do tend to appear either at the moment of death or at the moment of extreme heightened emotions. Like, like tsunamis. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's um, the ones where you get the most uh, crisis or apparitions are normally where there's wars or battles going on. <gasps> I have a really cool story about a tsunami. Tell me later. Um, and yeah, it's normally chaps who just don't want to be there because they don't want to get killed and they know they're going to get killed. So I feel quite sorry for them. I'll say it really quickly. And being ex army myself and going back in there, uh, yeah, not nice. Mm -hmm. Go on, quick. So basically, when I was in geography, my geography teacher was from Australia or Austria, one of the two, she had the accent, and... Um, well, does she sound like Arnie, or does she sound like uh, Aussie Rules? Oh, no. 
no, she was Australian. <laughs> and um, one of her students that she had taught went on holiday somewhere. I can't remember where it was. This was a long time ago. I've had a baby since. And she was looking out into the ocean because she was on the beach. And she saw, oh, my God, my nose just exploded. Maybe and she tell. saw, like, the tide go really far back. Oh, goes... Yeah. And she went to the Coast Guard person and she tried to warn them. She said, I think there's going to be a tsunami. And they were like, no, no, no we've got those sensors out that will sense when there's a change in the tide. And, and like... 10 minutes later she said no seriously I, I think there's going to be a tsunami i learned about this it looks like it's going to be a tsunami so they evacuated everyone and about i think it was like five minutes later the tsunami hit well bloody hell good job they listened to it yeah uh what was i going to say i do apologize for the cat's ass that may have just appeared in front of your <laughs> screen i don't there. you deserve it you deserve it cool. all of it you and as you know, uh, Taylor does um, suffer from. Um, you can't read the words, but maybe you've got dyslexia. Word dyslexia. Word, word blindness. So <laughs> that's why sometimes she trips out the words and I, and I help her on that. So. No waiters. Anyway, right. <gasps> no, wait. That's what? the one that you have to read. That's what? the one you have to read. <laughs> John Taylor's vision. Are you all right? Are you going to. Taylor. Are you all right? Do you, you want know, some cough medicine? Or, uh, <laughs> I have just done a COVID test. Can we just say I have just done a COVID test? No, no, and it was, it was negative. positive. Mm, hmm? I can yeah. go and grab it if you want. Hmm? Okay. Some... John Taylor's vision. You go and get some water. You go and do that. Take your plate out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh Jesus. Uh, on the night of January the 28th in 1783, <laughs> a wild young man named John Taylor sat drinking at the house of his friend, Thomas Pountley. In Bewdley, England. Not sure. Bewdley? I've never heard of Bewdley. I've heard of Bewley, but not Bewdley. Anyway, eventually Taylor drank so much that Portney's landlord refused to give him any more booze. And this made Taylor furious, and just as he was about to walk out the door, he collapsed. I think we've all been there a few occasions in the past. At first, uh, Pountney thought his friend had died, but after Pountney rested him on a bed, Taylor twisted back into life and began to have violent convulsions. Save for two brief moments of stillness, Taylor's attacks lasted for two whole nights. Oh dear. Once he became conscious again, he asked to be taken home to die. John Taylor ended up surviving his strange attack, but he couldn't remember what happened at Pulteney's after falling down. He said that he fell into a hole and was tortured by a mob of demons for what felt like five or six years. The pain was indescribable, and the demons only went away after an angel intervened and showed him the gates of heaven. Well, as, that is terrifying. as lucid dreams go, I would have to say that was pretty much um, up, the, up at number one. Yeah. In the I have sharted my pantaloons type of uh, bad dream. Other than that. Um, would you like to read how the great giant of Henley's... Did he survive it? Yes, he did. Okay. <coughs> I'm just going to some water. Gonna get a mouth organ out in a minute and go, whoo, and then start talking. <laughs> I was gonna whistle when I'm giggling. <laughs> Writing in the London magazine, the anthem Athenaeum. in 1847, a Welsh contributor contributor related a strange retailed a strange haunting in Wales that <laughs> occurred about a century earlier. In life, the great giant of Henley's was a large, horrible man who terrorised his neighbours. All the neighbourhood was happy when he finally passed away, but the giant turned out to be even worse in debt. Every night, he haunted the area's roads, which made everybody afraid to, afraid to leave their homes. Gathering in a church one night, a group of clergymen... Clergymen. Clergymen. That's it decided to exercise exercise the ghost spirit and the clergyman 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 began to perform the ritual the giant appeared in the form of a screaming monster nothing could spook these brave men however the great giant 
transformed in vain to a bull, a lion, and oddly enough, a wave of water. Tsunami. With each transformation, the giant grew weaker. Once he had turned into a fly, the clergyman. clergyman trapped him in a tobacco box. Why did I say it like that? I have no idea. <laughs> tobacco box. And tossed him into a lake. <clears throat> See, these, these Irish priests, you can't take out. They tossed him. That's Scottish. Ugh. Welsh. Oh, my. Um, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> At the time when the story was written down, it was said that the giant's tobacco box could still be seen in the same lake. It's made, of, <sighs> made of cardboard, though, isn't it? Well, back then, <laughs> tobacco boxes uh, would. Oh. So I don't know about that one. There was a giant um, down in. Uh, where was Ma? Where did she live? Ma? Uh, Princess Avenue? No, the bloody village. <laughs> That Beverly? No, no. No. Uh, anyway, there's a village near us that used to have a giant in it, and he's very famous, and he's buried there in a big. <coughs> and apparently, he was a nice guy. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, um, that reminds me. There's a lake in Surrey called what the doing? called the Silent Pool, and le sleeping? and legend has it that uh, in this Silent Pool, because I've been there and I've seen it, because I used to live near it. Really cl crystal clear water, and legend has it that uh, uh, a maid from King Arthur's court was swimming in there, and he came along on his horse and startled her and she went, ah! and drowned. And apparently, you can still hear her and still hear her on certain moonlit nights. Jeez, mm. uh, I was just uh, very gobsmacked because Chewie fell asleep standing up, resting his head on Obi. Was he asleep? Yeah, that's why he's lying down now. Well, now he wants a pee pee, but he was. <sighs> These pugs. Uh, we're nearly there, guys. We've only got two more left. The Hinton Ampner House. For generations... The... Have we got any questions before we carry on? Of course not. No. No. We have got people watching, so... For generations, the uh, Hinton Ampner House was inhabited by the Stu... Flip me gently. Stu the Stu Kelly. Stu Kelly. For generations, the Hinton, Am Hinton Ampner House was inhabited by the Stu Kelly family. Flipping it as a mouthful. Do you want else is a mouthful? The dinner that we just The had. dinner we had, Julius, yes, thank you. By the mid 18th century, the Stukeleys had, had died out and the house came into the hands of the St Stowells. Stowells? It's S T A Wells. Stowells. Stowells. It was then rented to William Henry Ricketts. That's a bit better. Yeah. And although Ricketts had no knowledge of it during the time, the house had a reputation for being haunted. Isn't Ricketts a name for like an illness? Like jaundice and whatnot. Yeah, Ricketts. I think it's, it affects your joints. Enough! Sorry, sorry. He doesn't even have balls and he's trying it. The pugs <laughs> with each other, they're brothers. <laughs> Once the Ricketts family moved in, they could hear the doors and windows violently shut at night. Footsteps could be heard in the hallways, and a man in drab-coloured clothes would sometimes appear. And three <laughs> disembodied voices could be heard having conversations. And he's just knocked the camera out. Thank you. Stop it. it no, it's back. Well. It's back. There you go. Can you please put the dogs out of the back, please? Because out. I, I, I'm going to end up stuffing one of the pugs in there. Out. With sage and onion, I think. Out. There you go. <sighs> disembodied voices. Do, 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 do. Three disembodied voices could be heard having conversations. Everybody in the house experienced something strange, and eight servants quit in 1769 alone. That kind of tells you something for all your staff as they notice like that and walking out. Lady Starwell, the owner of the house, offered a reward to anybody who could help solve the mystery. Nobody ever claimed the prize, and the, Hin the Hinton Ampner house was soon abandoned. In 1797, while tearing the building down, workers found a small skull in a box underneath the first, first floor. It was thought to be a monkey skull, but rumours abound that Lady Stowell's late husband had a baby with her sister, suggesting a grizzly theory. <laughs> That's not very nice. No. That's like not. the screaming skull as well. That was. I'll um. Wait, talk about that next week. Do you want to read out number one then? The ghost of Thomas Coley. 
What do you want me to do? One second. Oh. If you rub your eyes, you can hear a noise. I know. Mm. <laughs> In April 1751, an old beggar named Ruth Osborne, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Asked a farmer for some buttermilk in Tringe. Tring, it's a real place. Tring, England. The farmer said he didn't have any to spare, and Osborne told him, The king will take you and your hogs for your selfishness. Not long after this, the farmer and a few of his cows got sick. <clears throat> after talking about it with a supposed white witch, the farmer came to believe that Osborne had cursed him. <coughs> And her. Sorry. Since the legal system stopped taking witches seriously decades ago, the farmer and his neighbours had to take justice into their own hands. Mm. On April 18, a mob seized Osborne and her husband, John, out of a church that they were hiding in and forced them to a pond. Oh my god, I like this. The Osbournes then had their clothes ripped off and uh, were wrapped in sheets. And were, uh, and were dunked into the water. Ruth died on the spot, while John survived, but died a few days later. Although twenty-one people were later twenty-one in... people just, and they picked on an old uh, an old couple and do bugger all. Were later arrested for their role in the witch hunt. Only a chimney sweeper named Thomas Conley, Coley, sorry Coley, was punished. In August, Coley was hanged and his body was left to rot in the gallows. Since his death Coley has been said to haunt his execution spot. One witness in 1911, the village schoolmaster, described his ghost as an immense black dog with eyes like balls of fire. There you go. That's, that sounds more like a black shuck. Sounds like there's more going on than just that. My eyes are really blurry. I couldn't... I had to do this. Hey, do you? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you have it. That sounds like, um, well, a bloody witch hunt, which, quite frankly, all the witch hunts were disgusting. Uh, I don't agree with any of it. And uh, us picking on a poor beggar woman and her husband. Seriously. You know, um, they should have all been done for that, but they weren't. But Black Shuck, to me, that sounds like that was sent back. To, if, there's, if that guy's ghost is there, then there's a Black Shuck there, sent there to basically scare the living crap out of him all the time. Uh, Black Shuck is normally a portent of either warning or doom, and they're normally uh, found on coasts, predominantly the uh, west side of the country. So, uh, yes. I had to look with my eyes. You had to look with your eyes? Yeah, mostly southwest. So there you have it. This week we were doing uh, all Victorian stuff. Next week we will find another paranormal list at random and talk about it. Taylor won't have COVID. I don't have COVID. She's got hay fever. She had her first COVID jab when? <laughs> Two days ago. Two days ago. And this is the end result. This what? is hay fever. Mixed with that. When I had my COVID jabs, I was bloody awful for a couple of days. So she start mixing the hay fever. I think it's just hay fever and the fact that I've not been blowing my nose. Just like... Dirty. Anyway. Uh, we will be back on Friday night with myself and Mr. Wayne with another episode of The Dark Mirror Show. Can't even remember what the heck it was we were going to talk about on Friday, but I'm sure it'll be something. And we will be our usual stuff where we talk about nonsense, go off the beaten track, and then come back and throw a lot of facts and figures at you. So this is uh, because we didn't do a show yesterday, so that's why we've done it today. <laughs> and to be honest, I was having a really bad day anyway, yesterday, so mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been any fun. You, you weren't... Uh, I was angry. You were a bit prickly yesterday, weren't you? I was you? angry. Well, speaking of prickly... My chin? No, my shop. Go on, advertise your shop. If you guys are in the lookout for some... Uh, Plants. Prickle. Plants. Or plant cuttings, because I've got both. I've got an Etsy shop. Uh, it's just typing out I've the name just of her put Etsy the name shop now. In the comments, you prickle my fancy. That's her Etsy shop, and it's actually doing really well. So I'm quite proud of it. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, so if you want some cactus or rubber plants or whatever to flip it Not up, they're, they're everywhere. Plants. They're every bloody plants. where. I don't have rubber plants. I have cactus. I have jade plants. I have cheese plants. I have... They don't taste like cheese. They don't taste like cheese. I have... Like a cheese plant, it's not actually a cheese plant. It's like a climbing cheese plant, but it's not actually in the cheese plant family. Have a look on Mother Etsy. Of millions. Have a look on Etsy at you. Pr you prickle my fancy. All one word. Transcendicus, I think it's called. So we'll be back on Friday, myself and Wayne, with another uh, episode of the Dark Mirror Radio Show, and we'll be back. Are we going to be back on Sunday? Yes. We should be. Wait. Madness. So, yes, uh, and we'll be back on Sunday with another paranormal top 10 list. Pointy boy babies. Pointy, pointy boy babies. The one's in the window. Pointy boy. Pointy cactus. It's not cactus. Like a snake plant, but not a snake plant. It's, it's, Just have a look. Just go have a look. It's pretty it's cool. And on that note, I will say it's a goodbye from me. <coughs> and it's goodbye from her. Say goodbye. It's goodbye from her. And it's goodbye for me. <coughs> and it's goodbye from the pugs who are now looking at me with really soulful eyes trying to get up on my neck. And where's the ghost? Oh, the ghost is curled up on the sofa behind me. So on that note, I will see you on Friday, hopefully. And uh, I wish you all a very good week. Bye, see, bye. Bye, 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 bye. I'm straight, but thank you. <laughs>